I'm going to show you how to replace the rollers in your dryer. I'll show you how to take the dryer apart and how to put it back together. If your dryer is squeaking, making a thumping noise or wobbling, you want to check your rollers. The rollers need to rotate or spin freely so that the drum can properly turn. Those rollers support your drum. This is a Kenmore 90 series gas dryer. You want to unplug it before you start working on it and turn off the gas. You want to pry these end caps off. They should just pull forward. There's a screw at each end of this panel to remove. It's a Phillips. Now you pull the panel forward just a little bit and rotate it back and let it rest by itself. Now there's three screws to remove. There, there, and there. Quarter inch nut driver. top panel just comes forward. Pull it towards you and it comes right off. Take the lint screen out. Now we need to get the lower kick panel off. There's two clips, one on either side, located about three and a half inches in. I'm going to use a 5 and one tool, which is this, to push it in and release those clips. I use a paper towel so I don't scratch the surface of the dryer. Push the 5 and one tool in, push it in, pull the panel forward. Now the panel comes up and off. These are the two clips you're pushing with either a 5-in-1 tool or a screwdriver to release the tension on them or spring on them. Now you remove the two door springs, one there and one there. Just pull down on the spring Down here on the right hand side there's a yellow wire. It's the moisture sensor wire. You need to remove that. I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers to remove that moisture sensor wire. Pull it right off. Now you're going to remove two screws for the upper panel. That's one. The other one's over here. This is the lint screen duct. You'll have two screws to remove. That one and that one. Once you remove those two screws, the lint screen duct comes right off. Now you need to remove these wires before you remove this top door panel. I used a marker to mark the connectors and where they go. So three dots for the white one, two dots for the blue wire, and one dot for the brown wire. It's just easier for me to remember where they go, and you'll have to release this connector. I'm just grabbing hold of the ends and pulling them off. If you need help pulling them off, use some needle nose pliers. So be careful not to cut yourself. These edges are sharp, so be a little careful there. All of these edges of these panels the ones you take off the top, the lower panel, and this panel, all of these are sharp, so be very careful. They can cut you. Now you have two screws to remove from the top panel, one here and one here, and then we're going to lift this panel off. When you lift up on this panel to remove it or pull it forward, this drum is going to want to sink down, so you want to lift up on that drum a little bit to remove this panel. Then you can just rest the drum. Now the drum has to come out. 
To get the drum out, we have to release the tension on this belt. That's the idler pulley right there I'm pointing at. To release the tension on the belt, we have to push that idler pulley up and to the left to release the tension. Once we've done that, we can remove the belt, unloop it from the idler pulley and the shaft of the motor. I'm reaching my left hand in from the left side of the drum and my right hand in through here. We're gonna remove the drum now. Most people do it by pulling up on the belt. The belt carries the weight of the drum and they pull the drum out. Here's why I don't like that. There are two indentations on the front of this dryer cabinet, one there and one here. That sharp metal. And what happens is when you pull that drum out and bring that belt along with it, that belt gets caught up on this sharp metal. That can cut the belt, so I wouldn't do it that way. So here's how I remove the drum. I'm gonna pull up on the belt and start moving the drum out toward the front. Once I can get my hand behind the back of that drum, I'm going to push this belt off the back so it can go free and not have to make it past these sharp edges because if I want to reuse that belt, I don't want to cut or braid that belt. Typically, you just need to replace the rollers if you're having a problem, not the roller and the shaft. The goal is to make sure that these rollers spin freely. The way you get the roller off, you use a screwdriver, a small screwdriver, to remove this keeper. You just pry it up, rotate a little bit when you get one side up, put the screwdriver in, and pry off the keeper. The roller comes right off. This is the shaft of the roller. It's likely not going to be worn on yours unless you've let it get way out of hand. If it's worn, you have to replace the shaft. If not, you just clean this. I'm going to use some denatured alcohol and a paper towel, clean it up, and then I'll show you what I do to lubricate the roller before I put everything back together. All right, y'all, I put a little denatured alcohol and a paper towel, and I'm just going to clean the shaft of that roller. Then I clean the inside of the roller with the denatured alcohol. Then I use a little bit of silicone lubricant spray that I spray into a container and use a Q-tip to apply the lubricant to the shaft of the roller and to the inside of the roller. Put the new roller on and then put the keeper back on. There you go. You change the other rollers the same way you change this one. It's that easy. It's important that these rollers spin freely because these are the supports for your drum. You should check your idler pulley and make sure it spins freely. The idler pulley on the other side has a keeper right there that you can remove and lubricate the shaft of that idler pulley and clean it up. You want to make sure that both the idler pulley and the rollers spin freely. If they don't, either one can cause your belt to slip. Time to put the dryer back together. So the drum goes in first. I put the belt on the drum to put the drum back in because as you clear these areas on both sides, it's smooth and won't cut the belt. When you're putting the drum in, you want the rim of the drum on the back to rest on those two rollers right there. Now we have to loop the belt back around the idler pulley and the motor shaft. To 
to align the belt, rotate the drum clockwise. I'm going to put the front top panel on now. What you want to do is get those two rollers under the lower lip of that drum and then use your knee on the panel to push in and pull up. Now replace the two screws on the top panel. Reattach the four wires to the front panel. Reattach the moisture sensor wire right there, y'all. It's time to put the lint screen housing back in. There's a clip down here. The bottom of this lint screen housing, right there, rests in the dip of that clip, the indentation. And then you put your two screws in on either side of this lint screen housing. Place the two lower screws for the top panel. Place the door springs. I'm going to put the lower panel on now. There are two clips at the bottom of the dryer that this panel rests on. So you put them in their slots. You rotate the panel up, press down these two springs, clips, and press it in. Put the lint screen back in. Now I'm going to put the top panel back on. You just set it on top and slide it back. You want to make sure that the panel is under these tabs. Now you replace the three top screws. Rotate the control panel down. Replace the screw on each side. Place the trim pieces. And that's how you change rollers on a Kimmore dryer. Hope it helps and happy DIYing.